Is it possible to unknow a story? I love the question because it centers on the moment that we're sitting in right now. A little bit of a title, a little bit of a mystery, a little bit of open possibility. No characters, no plot, no conflict, no judgment, no assumption, just open imagination. Then something happens, right? Awareness sets in, some rules start to emerge, expectations activate, you meet a character, that character does something. Then maybe that character says something, that character meets you, says a thing, thinks a thing, and then sometimes there's another character, and all of a sudden that story takes flight. And how you choose to chase it is really, really important. Are you gonna wait, are you gonna read, are you gonna reflect? Probably in your mind, you're gonna to start to create a little bit of a plot line. Five W's and an H, you're craving to sort of create up the expectations and line up your idea of that story in a row, and all of a sudden you're reading yourself. And it's interesting because I'm primarily an auditory learner, but when you're an auditory learner, it's really hard to read. Because a lot of times sights and sounds start to get in your head, and when I get inside my head, I don't often know how to get out. And often when I see those things in front of me, my brain starts to take me to places that I don't know how to come back from. When I lived in Toronto, I used to love going to the subway. I would sit in those places and I would people watch, and I would imagine the stories of those faces of people that flew past me every single day. And I would create the narratives, sometimes similar, sometimes consistent, because I saw the same thing every single day. I loved sitting there because I felt like the story of Toronto was being laid out in front of me in 70 kilometer an hour snippets. During this time, around 2005, I had a little bit of an existential crisis. Nothing serious, but I started to wonder if there was something that I could do besides cooking. At the time, I had invested almost 20 years in the hospitality service. service. So I sat at the crossroads of a decision to go deeper, buy something for myself, or start something else. I chose the latter and started to teach. And when I arrived in my first classroom, I was a little bit heartbroken, because that classroom was a little bit of a shabby representation of the kitchen that I had come from. And I started to ask myself, what is a classroom if not where I learned how to do my craft. From this headspace, I wondered what others were doing. What were they doing with their classroom? Not everybody learned how to teach inside of a classroom like me. My first step was to connect with other teachers. But unfortunately, when I walked into those staff rooms, I found ideas that either inspired me or gave me a deeper understanding of my context. So why not? I joined Twitter. I jumped out there, started throwing down 140 characters to see what other folks were doing. But I found that there was a whole lot of action going on out there, just not with me. A whole lot of discussions, but no one's talking to me. And even though I found a lot of interesting stuff, none of it landed with me. And all of a sudden I realized that full view of a partial landscape wasn't, another, wasn't enough also, also. So I wandered outside my classroom, and I started to think to myself, how are others getting past their own concepts of bias? How are they getting outside their own lived experience? How are they sort of looking to others to find out how they can create change in their own learning spaces? And this became fundamental to my change. And I started to say things like 21st century learner. And even as I looked outside my bubble to see what that was, it became unfathomable to me and I didn't really know what was going on. So I did the thing that everything a teacher does. I started a blog and a podcast. <laughs> the downside of that podcast is I used the narrow, narrow 45 point list of questions that I thought what I wanted to find in education and it did not work. It did not work at all. So where I went next was I started to think about what is the truth in education? What are the stories in education? Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie says that the story, stories are really important, but you settle on that single story and you find stereotype. And when you sit on a stereotype, that's where you start to lose meaning. So I knew I had to get outside my bubble and get to the source code. So instead of talking too much, like I am now, I started listening and I found some pretty amazing stories, like the golden backpack. Imagine, imagine a classroom where the essay inside your backpack is really awesome until you hand it in. It's protected, it's super powered, and then it's zero. <laughs> the story of ICU, the power of a teacher being able to see a student for the first time and celebrate their differences, and that young student becoming a teacher and then sharing that exact same thing and deciding that I need to see the things in my students that are the differences, so they can go on and share that same idea. Or how about, I might not be brave, but I'm comfortable with being the only. I have a teacher friend that is entirely, entirely comfortable with that mantra. I will do that thing, I will try that thing, I will go there because I know the students need to see me doing it. And then there's also 
I've got something to tell you, sir. And you can only imagine the context of what comes up behind that one. But I'll give you a little bit of a snippet. Imagine a student just moving here from somewhere, a newly landed person learning English, just starting to enjoy what it means to be Canadian. And they walk up to you in class and they say that. We're talking a little bit about playgrounds where balls aren't bouncing, but bullets are. Would you like to have recess every day? There are classrooms out there right now that are considered place-based learning. You're not buying your fancy sort of buckle up shoes on the first day, you're getting rubber boots because that's outdoor learning. You're gonna be walking in water, you're gonna be seeing trees, and you're gonna be mindful on the outside. And I found that a really remarkable way to play and learn. Broken cameras normally go in the garbage can, but someone related to me that sometimes they make the best memories. Especially when you lend your camera to a student on a class trip and they don't tell you that they broke the camera and you continue to take pictures and you make it back to class thinking you got pictures. That's a whole little memory play that you have to go back through. I love Clint Smith. He has a wonderful TED talk where he shares with his students all the time. He says, read critically, write consciously, speak clearly and tell your truth. And I started to realize in pursuing some of the stories that are out there in education that I had to not focus so much on the characters not so much on the plots, not so much on the assumptions. And what I really, really learned is that some of the epic novels that you saw in short form, it was an honor to be able to exist in that small chapter. So what I ask you right now, if you could be messy and beautiful, what is a Pecha Kucha to you? Go find your story. <laughs>